this is uh, definitely one of those reviews. Yeah, this review is of the Primair i35 integrated amplifier. And Primair, by the way, is a company based in Sweden. They were founded in 1985. I'm telling you all this because you might not know the name. And I, but my history with Primair goes way back to the late 80s and early 90s when I was still a hi-fi salesman and I sold Primair Electronics. And I was hugely attracted to it back then because it looked and felt and sounded like nothing else. It had this clean aesthetic to it, the look of it, the feel of it, the user interface, and the sound. It was very immediate in how you felt about this amplifier. Uh, there was, it was nothing namby-pamby about it, as they say. You, you, you heard this sound and you were either drawn to it or you were like, oh, I'm not really so sure about this sound. But in any case, uh, getting back into the Primair fast lane with this one, with the i35, was a total pleasure on my part. Now this is a sleek, low-slung amplifier, but it is a very powerful amplifier. It's rated at 150 watts a channel into 8 ohms, 300 watts a channel into 4 ohms, and it is stable into 2 ohm loads. And that's a rare feat because that requires a lot of current. Now it is, by the way, a Class D amplifier, but Primair doesn't use an off-the-shelf Class D power module. No, it doesn't use a Purify or a Hypex or an Ice Power. No, it's none of those. It's called UFPD2. And rather than me try to stumble through describing what that is exactly, I'm just going to provide a link in the description below this video to their website where you can read a full explanation of what UFPD2 is and how it works and why it sounds the way it does. So anyway, that's that. But I would quickly add that the sound of any amplifier, a class D amplifier or a, a class A or class AB, that the power supply of the amplifier plays at least a large role as the output stage and the bias of the output stage. No, it is power supply. And this one has a switching power supply, but one that is finely tuned <laughs> by the primary engineers to bring out the best in the UFPD2 output stage. Now there are niceties like two layer and four layer uh, circuit boards and all that stuff, but I'm not gonna go too into the tech. That's not really my forte as a reviewer. If you wanna learn that, again, the website has plenty of information. Oh, I don't wanna to get too far into this without mentioning that this is a modular design. <laughs> yes, it is. So what I reviewed is the base version, the all analog version, meaning no digital connectivity or DAC whatsoever. So my uh, sample here had uh, just two XLR, two sets of XLR inputs, three sets of RCA inputs, a fixed level, line level output, and also a preamplifier output that can also be used to drive, well, subwoofers, one or two subwoofers. Now, as for the modular aspect, if you decide, if you buy this all analog version and down the road you decide that you do want to use the internal DAC, you can order it and install it yourself after the fact. Oh, and by the way, the, the base version, the one I reviewed, is $4,400 in two available finishes, uh, titanium or black. Build quality, by the way, is just gorgeous. It's impeccably finished. Knob feel is extraordinary, really right up there. Those knobs are solid machine pieces of metal. The feel of them, how they rotate, the detents on the input selector, Really, really nicely done. Volume knobs also very smooth in its op operation. Now, of course, most of the time you're going to be using the remote, and the remote is a, a nice but a plastic remote, and it does kind of break the spell. You might like the feel of those knobs so much you might put aside the remote and only get up and have hands-on operation with the i35. But getting back to the modular aspect, Right. So if you decide you do want to use uh, the internal jack, you can buy it after the fact because it's a plug-in board 
and the matching DAC is $995. And there's also a matching network player, and that is $650. But you could save money and not and just buy the whole thing with the DAC and the network player built in when you buy it. So and, and it's it's less expensive that way if you buy it with the DAC and or the network player already installed. So you have options, you have choices, and I always like having choices. Now there is a, a display on the front panel, obviously. It is an OLED display, it's a very clean looking display, it's a dimmable display. But it isn't the easiest to read display. It is on the small side. But here's the thing. There are menu options. And the text for the menu options are really, really tiny. <laughs> I mean, really tiny. You're going to have to be right up close and personal with the i35 to adjust those options. And the options are things that you're not really going to use all that often, like a balance control, left-right balance, the dimmable display, the auto power on, or whether or not you're going to use auto power on, all that kind of stuff, standby, et cetera, et cetera. Though the text for those for that menu options is definitely on uh, the small side. So oh, the warranty runs to two years. As for the review system used over the course of this review, the Golden Ear T66 speakers that I just reviewed days ago, and also my reference speakers the Pure Audio Project Duet 15. Uh, the DAC, because I did not have an internal DAC, remember there's no internal DAC on my review sample, so the DAC that I used was the Mola Mola Tembaki. The CD transport was the Jay's Audio CDT2. So I started the listening sessions with the Golden Ear T66 speakers and the first music selection by Chet Baker, recorded in late 1958, early 1959. It is in stereo, as the cover says, and it is really good stereo. This isn't that left-right stereo thing. No, it's a very modern sounding stereo mix. Chet Baker's trumpet, the leading edge, the transient response was spot on. Same for Pepper Adams' saxophone, that sense of breathiness of air moving through the horn, I got that. Very well done. Um, oh, and the bottom end, Paul Chambers' bass, the precision of it, the sense of moving air in this large wooden body instrument, I, I sense that so well with this amplifier with the Golden Ear T66. Space. Uh, again, it was the precision of the sound that was really startling. And the top end detailing in the cymbals was, were so airy, not bright, but just a sense of purity and clarity to the sound that was truly striking. For the next recording, this one, I think I've talked about this one before. This is a Chesky Records se session. I was present at the session. It's a jazz version of Dark Side of the Moon, as the name implies. And uh, this is live to two track. In other words, one stereo microphone, um, no overdubs, no dynamic range compression, no equalization, none of that stuff. It's one of those you are there experiences recorded in a church in Brooklyn. And I got to say, um, this amplifier, the i35, just it was a clear window to the sound. And that's, that was a recurring theme over my listening sessions was the purity of the presentation. Now for contrast, I decided to put in, uh, as a comparison, the linear tube audio microzotal preamp, which is a tube preamplifier, and mated that with the PassLab's XA25 power amplifier. And the differences in sound were not subtle. The, the LTA pass combination was fuller and weightier and more had more uh, well, voluptuous quality to sound, yeah. Um, less neutral is what I'm saying. C certainly less neutral. But the LTA pass combination seemed more powerful. The dynamics loomed larger with the dark side of the moon the jazz side of the moon recording. Now, mind you, <laughs> the Pass Labs amplifier is a 25 watt per channel amplifier. 
uh, and the i35 is 150 watts. So it's not literally the difference in power, but the sense of power delivery for whatever reason. Now, the, the pass amplifier is a class A amplifier, but for whatever reason, the pass uh, LTA combinations seem more dynamically alive and just had a warmer presentation, which also translates as to less top-end detail and sparkle and clarity. So at this point, I would be willing to say that, yeah, the i35 was the more neutral of the two. Maybe something in the middle would be even better. But as it stands right now, the i35 was more neutral and the LTA pass was warmer and sweeter and, th and, and richer. And again, this is with the T66 speakers. At this point, I swapped out the speakers, the T66 for my reference speakers, the Pure Audio Project Duet 15s. And I played this recording, <laughs> this guy, Jordan Officer. I just discovered this guy, I just found his music, and I am knocked out by his sound. Now, he's a guitarist. Uh, he plays jazz, he plays blues, he plays rock, maybe rockabilly rock. It, it's something about the tone of his guitar, his reverb choices. I don't know, he's got something really special. So I bought this CD and I'm free and I also bought his jazz CD. Uh, he's Canadian, by the way. He does some vocals. I like his vocals. He sometimes sounds a bit like Willie Nelson. Uh, but in any case, <laughs> there's something really special going on with the sound of his guitar, his tone, his choices, everything about it. It absolutely speaks to me. Uh, oh, so anyway, back to the uh, comparison here. The pa comparison is still between the i35 and the LTA and pass amplifier on this time though, the Pure Audio Project. And the differences were maybe even more stark in terms of that neutral sound that I was getting from the i35 and that bigger, weightier, more fleshed out sound from the LTA and the uh, pass amplifier. So, okay, so, so at this point, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't just that I was using a tube preamplifier, that that was the source of the warmth that I was getting with the pass amplifier. So at that point, I swapped out the LTA preamplifier for a Pass Labs XP30 solid state preamplifier, matched that with the X, uh, XA25 solid state amp, and again, did the comparison, and it was moved in the direction of neutral, but still the pass-pass combination had a fuller, more dynamic, more, let's say, powerful sound than the i35. Interesting, right? Now, the i35 still had, was still ahead in terms of that incredibly pure top end, that just so effortless, airy top end, definition in the bottom end, even there, yeah, the i35 was ahead of the pass-pass combination. But I wanted more of that, you know, it was a little too lean for me. Maybe that's where I'm going with this. Uh, the, again, bass definition, yes, excellent. But weight, that's what I'm looking for here. The weight and fullness was definitely moving over to the side of the pass-pass-pass preamp, pass-power amp combination. So then continuing, with the Purio Project and the i35, I'm playing James Taylor's JT album. <laughs> and man, what a great recording. It really holds up. Again, one of those I haven't played in decades. His voice sounded so right, so right there. I mean, a complete human being <laughs> appearing between the left and right channels of the Purio Project speakers his phrasing, his breath control, the band, the dynamics, everything about it was so, well, perfect. I mean, I had no complaints. It was doing the job. Man, James Taylor's recordings, in the, especially in those days, were so well-crafted. I forget the engineer, but that was one of those moments over the course of doing this review that really took my breath away, just how the i35 Pure Audio Project combo was firing on all cylinders. Moving on, I played this iconic 
live Little Feet album. <laughs> and I gotta say, the funky grooves, the funkiest of funk grooves, were just charging through the Pure Audio Project speakers. I mean, the electricity of the live event was so well captured in the recording and now played back over the i35 and the Pure Audio Project speakers. Now the soundstage, I would say, I wouldn't call it expansive. It was big, it was spacious, it had reasonable amount of depth, but moving back to the Pass XP30, Pass XA25 power amp, it did open up more. There was a bigger sense of space that was released. Yes, that's the word, released by the Pass Labs combination. At this point, I wanted to squeeze in one more amplifier comparison, and this is it. This is the Leak 230 Integrated. Now, it's a much less expensive amp. It's only $1,650. It's going to be getting its own review in a week or so here on the channel. But in this case, the i35 far exceeded what the Leak 230 was capable of. The i35 was just more powerful, in this case, definitely more dynamic bass control, exceeded the Leak 230, that top end. Yeah, man, that top end of the i35 is a winning it's so pure and clear and extended and effortless. It's, I just, my ear was definitely drawn to that. So anyway, yeah, and I would say, oh, and the sound stage I was getting in comparison to the leak, the leak's stage smaller, flatter, more 2D, and the i35 just opened up. It just breathed, it just relaxed more coming out of the i35. But you know, Rather than just talk about comparisons, the thing about living with the i35 was just feeling like I could hear into the recordings, into the mix. Good sounding recordings sounded really good. <laughs> and not so good recordings, yeah, their flaws were definitely revealed by the i35. But again, man, like on that James Taylor, that JT album, what, <laughs> sorry to repeat myself here, but his vocal sound was just so good. I mean, James as a singer, but also the sound of the recording itself as communicated by the i35 was uh, definitely a spine tingling moment. <laughs> yeah. So that was a really good lead up too. So Steve, what do you really think of the Primair i35 integrated amplifier? Yes, if you are the kind of buyer who prioritizes purity and clarity and transparency and immediacy in hearing into the recording, the i35 gets a strong thumbs up from me. And I like the modular aspect of the design. I almost never want to use what the manufacturer of a preamplifier, an integrated amp, what they choose to use inside. No, no disrespect to Primera. I'm sure they make a hell of a DAC but I'd rather pick my own. I'd rather go with a shit deck or a Denifreps deck or, you know, the choices are endless. Hollow Spring, Meridian, you name it. That's what I want. And I want to, if I was into network uh, streaming, which I'm not, but if I did, uh, yeah, I'd want to pick my own as well. And I, I love that the fact that Primera is basically open-minded about this, about letting their customers choose to use their own DAC or pick their own. Yeah, I think that's it. So anyway, let's go, let's move on to <laughs> the Audiophiliac viewer system of the day. I like this. David sent in these very nice pictures. He lives in the UK. He's streaming Rune from a rock core. I don't know what that is. But anyway, the streamer itself is an Aurelic Aries G1. The DAC Cord TT2 and the preamp is a Prima Luna Evo 100 a phono preamp West 2.2. Turntable is a Project Perspex 6SB with a carbon tone arm. Car the cartridge is a Transfiguration Phoenix. It's a moving coil. And for listening to vinyl over headphones, he has a musical fidelity balanced headphone amp. The speakers, they look familiar. Those are Harbeth SHL5+. Plus. David says this beat, the system is always in flux. I know the feeling. And uh, he's recently trying out a Luxman L509X this weekend. I'm not sure when that was. 
as a potential replacement for the pre-power combo. Anyway, listening to he's listening to more vinyl than ever. Anyway, thank you, David. <laughs> okay, we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg, and I am the Audiophiliac, and I'm going to cut right to it. If you enjoy the channel, if you enjoy the reviews and viewer systems of the day and interviews and Herb and show reports, I'm going to be doing a show report, I hope, I think, from Capital Audio Fest real soon uh, in a week or so. Uh, yeah, please consider joining and supporting my Patreon to do so. Super easy to do. The address is on the screen right now. If you just like a given video, like maybe this one, please hit the like button. And if you have yet to subscribe to the channel, please do so. And with that, I can say my work here is at last complete. Thank you again for watching. And I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.